Good luck to everyone out there taking the November LSAT. I hope that you crush it. At this point in the final week before the November LSAT, I'm typically getting lots of last minute questions about LSAT test day and how to prep in the final week. Today, I'm gonna to break all of that down for you. For those who don't know me, my name is Steve Schwartz. I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005, and I personally increased my LSAT score from a 152 to a 175. Of course, back when I took the LSAT, it was only available in person and on paper. Now you can take it on a computer and possibly from home or alternatively in person at a parametric testing center. The rules look a bit different depending on where you take it, so I'll walk you through all of that. If you're taking the LSAT remotely, meaning from home, pens, pencils, mechanical pencils, and highlighters are all totally fine. You can have six sheets of scratch paper. It can be blank, lined, or graph paper, but it has to be a standard size, meaning eight and a half by 11. There used to be a loophole where you could use legal sized paper, but LSAC has since closed that loophole. You can have any kind of drink, but it's got to be in a clear container and you can use soft foam generic earplugs to block out noise. If you're taking the LSAT in person at a parametric testing center, the rules are a little bit different. They will supply you with noise canceling headphones to block out sound from other test takers and the proctor. They'll give you pencils and scratch paper, so don't bring your own. If you wanna have a drink, that's fine, but it's got to be water in a clear container and you'll be taking the LSAT on their device, meaning a desktop computer, so don't bring your own computer or tablet. With regard to test date timing, you're gonna have two 35 minute sections back to back, a 10 minute break, and two more 35 minute sections back to back if you have standard timing, meaning you don't have accommodations. If you have accommodations for extra time or extra breaks, the rules may look a little bit different, test day may look a little bit different, and of course that's going to make test day longer for you. Now, regardless of whether you have accommodations or not, test day is pretty long, and so you wanna work on your pacing and endurance before the big day. I typically recommend that you do at least 10 full-length timed practice tests, but at this point, final week prior, if you've done at least five practice tests, you're probably in a pretty good place. You may want to do one more practice test this week. So for example, if you're taking the LSAT on Friday, you're gonna to wanna to take Thursday off to rest and relax, meaning take a hot bath, get a massage, go for a watch, watch Netflix, whatever relaxation means for you. You may wanna do a little bit of studying. If not, studying would stress you out, but don't overdo it. Consider doing one last practice test on Wednesday, but again, only if it won't stress you out. Regardless of the results, don't get overly invested in outlier results, meaning don't place too much stock in unusually high or unusually low practice test results, especially this close to the exam. Instead, take the average of your most recent five practice tests, and that'll be the best indication of where you currently stand. Remember, you can always retake the LSAT. The January and February LSATs are not too late. You can still apply to law school this cycle, and law schools will not penalize you for having multiple LSAT takes on your record. They do not average multiple LSAT scores, but rather they only consider the highest score on your record and retaking the LSAT is totally fine. And if you do decide to retake the LSAT, my team and I would be glad to help you out. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you on your journey to achieving a top LSAT score. You can check out the links below to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. And of course, Whenever you're taking the LSAT, November, January, February, or beyond, logic games are no longer on the test. LSAC has replaced the logic game section with a second scored logical reasoning section. And so on test day, you're going to have two scored logical reasoning sections, one scored reading comp section, and one unscored extra section of either logical reasoning or reading comprehension. No more logic games on the test. And so whatever your worst nightmare is for what test day could look like, make sure to practice that on at least one of your practice tests going forward. So for example, if you would hate to have three logical reasoning sections in a row, practice that. If you'd hate to have two reading comps in a row, practice that. And of course you could have two reading comps or three logical reasonings because of that unscored extra section. Make sure to factor this into your LSAT study plan if you're taking the LSAT going forward. That's all for now, folks. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.